Let's go now live to Dr. Nancy Snow, professor of public diplomacy at Kyoto University of Foreign Studies. Uh, Dr. Snow, thanks for joining me today. I'm sure you've been watching uh, this all very closely, the events of today. So what do you expect to come out of these talks? Well, I think that there will be a recognition that things have gone well and that this is the beginning of a more positive process of uh, these two countries relating to each other. I think it's noteworthy here to see how comfortable President Trump on this bilateral exchange. We just saw him at the G7 have a uh, very uh, negative experience in part. I mean, he came out and denounced Justin Trudeau. And uh, here, though, it's one person with another person. And I think Trump is, is very, very comfortable in that setting. It's very much like the art of the deal. And from what I'm hearing, President Trump and his style of negotiation for quite some time. So they, too, feel very confident going into this face-to-face -face meeting between these two players that really need each other, clearly. It's not just North Korea having to give up something, but this is also about Trump building respectability internationally as a global leader. Mm -hmm. What would you say are the goals of both parties involved here? For the North Korean side, as if they are also in need of being seen as a global player, that they are sitting on something that they know the world wants them to give up, which is this nuclearized Korean peninsula. They also want the end of recognition of the end of the Korean War. There's no question. And I'm sure they are looking forward to have more of an opening up. We forget sometimes that North Korea and the North Korean people are engaging more in a very limited economy, not at the levels that many of us are used to, but they are peeking out into the world through the eyes of this leader. But I think it's percolating down now. We saw that during the Winter Olympics as well. And there's no back now. It's not as if there's going to be a collapse of uh, going forward. They have to get something, even if it's piecemeal, even if denuclearization takes years. There are going to be uh, measures of uh, building goodwill on both sides. On the U.S. side, as I said, this means the world to Trump because this is about his saving face when he is often not only in the United States but around the world. And he said that uh, only he could pull off something like this. So far, so good. <laughs> Even if the rhetoric caught last summer, there were also missiles flying over. Tokyo. There were threats of missiles going into the United States. This is remarkable this day. Mm -hmm. Appreciate this moment that these two have finally sat down together. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Snow, you are based there uh, in Japan. Talk to us about how the Japanese government is viewing this meeting and also how it's being covered in the media there. Well, there is a, a bit of a positive feeling here that uh, Japan won't be under this threat from the missiles testing, those that went over Hokkaido, for instance, and there was, uh, there were a lot of feeling unnerved last summer. Then Shinzo Abe played on that with his uh, uh, cementing of his power in the fall with his snap elections. Now Japan wants to have a seat at the table. You're going to see many countries, not just Japan, that will want to have their own meetings. Japan has a vested interest in getting back any remaining uh, Japanese who were kidnapped in North Korea. Just in this U.S. maintaining a very strong U.S.-Japan security alliance. So as long as things go well for the United States and Trump in particular, Shinzo Abe will be on a meeting with some of the, just Kim, but also with Moon. And then you would see China getting involved again. They've been more in the background here. 
but they have played critical roles. So Japan does not want to be out of this equation. But right now, today, it had to be the United okay. States and North Korea. All right. Dr. Nancy Snow, professor of public diplomacy at Kyoto University of Foreign Studies. Thank you for your thoughts today.